Hey guys, so we posted the video on the Ames inverter install in our Thor 25.3 Vegas. Um, we did an unboxing information and a somewhat install video. Unfortunately, due to the tight compartment space, we couldn't get in there with cameras and stuff and show you all the electrical connections and things of that nature. But since posting those videos, we've had several questions on YouTube, on Facebook, people asking how certain parts of it were connected and what circuits we used and so on and so forth. So what I decided to do was to try to help everybody out and pretty much answer all the questions that I possibly can in a video. So <clears throat> what I've done is I took this whiteboard and I actually drew out the diagram that you see here that shows how this system was set up in our motor coach. You keep in mind, every coach is going to be different, every RV travel trailer, it's going to be different. This is just going to show you the basics of how I set up and installed our system and how it works. Um, the inverter that we're using is the Ames PWRIX120012S. Um, it's basically a 1200 watt inverter and it's capable of doing a sustained 2400 watts with 1200 watts continuous. Now the other thing that we bought with this is the remote power switch, uh, which I'll put a link to both of these down in the description so you can find them on Amazon. Um, I was actually relatively impressed. This inverter is a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, if you've watched our videos before, which I'll link to, it, we pretty much explained everything about the inverter itself. But getting into the actual RV, basically the way the system is set up originally is you have your house batteries, your shore power, your generator, and then a transfer switch. And this was how our 25.3 Vegas is set up. It's a 2018 model. The generator and the shore power go into the transfer switch. And then from the transfer switch, it goes into the actual electrical panel, uh, which is back right across from the refrigerator on our unit. Inside of that is where the actual circuit breakers and the 12 volt fuse circuit is for the 12 volt features inside of the RV. Now you've got your air conditioner, your microwave, your GFCI outlets, the receptacles, and then the converter itself. The converter is what charges your battery. The inverter is what takes 12 volt battery power and converts it over to 120 volts AC current. Um, Inside of this panel, there's a ground bar, there's a neutral bar, just like a standard household electrical panel. The added feature is the circuit board that's over here to the side that has the 12 volt battery feed coming in. What we wanted in our system was for the receptacles to be powered by the inverter. Um, what that in turn would allow us to do is charge camera batteries, cell phones, um, we can run a small fan. We could turn both of our indoor TVs on. Uh, the receptacles that were housed in the compartments with the TVs that would play the DVD player, um, VCR if you're old school, those are powered as well because they're all on that same circuit. Now in order to find this, I actually got a wiring diagram from Thor. I uh, called them in Elkhart, Indiana, and they gave me the diagram telling me what receptacles were on what circuit. The GFCI receptacles mostly are on the exterior of the coach, um, anywhere where water could come in contact with them, just like a household circuit. So in order to install the inverter, forget about all this stuff up here. We're going to talk about the 12 volts first. You've got your battery, which has got your positive and negative leads coming off. 12 volt system. The negative goes to an actual ground on the chassis itself. So the 12 volt system is grounded to the RV. The positive runs over to the electrical panel inside of the electrical housing on the RV. 
From there, what we done is there was an open positive lug for 12 volts that would accept a cable to run over to our positive side of our inverter. We then in turn grounded our inverter in a ground bar that is installed by Thor inside of the electrical compartment that was already had available slots in it. So that made that installation relatively simple. Uh, we then in turn ran our electrical cord for our switch, which comes pre-wired when you purchase it from Ames, and ran it up front. Now, going back to the original video on the inverter, it has a built-in transfer switch similar to the transfer switch that's on the generator and the shore power. The difference is, is that transfer switch inside of the inverter recognizes if there is 120 volts being fed to the inverter to allow it to pass through and go out to the receptacles themselves. If not, and the inverter is turned on by the power switch, then it in turn inverts the 12 volts to 120 and sends that power out. Now granted, this is gonna drain your house battery. You know, that's, that's a key concept that you have to keep in mind. The more stuff that you run on the inverter, the faster it's gonna drain the house batteries. So if you've got two 12 volts, um, you know, two six volts, however your system's set up, you're gonna have to decipher out how many amp hours that you have and things of that nature, and I'm not getting into all the mathematical calculations. There's plenty of websites out there where you can punch the stuff in and Google will calculate it out for you. Um, but for our system, we took the line coming out of the receptacle breaker. Originally, this tied from the ground bar, the hot lead from the receptacle, and the neutral bar out of our electrical panel and went straight out and went straight to our receptacles. In other words, it didn't make this loop through the inverter originally. It just went straight over. What I done is because Thor left enough wire there, I actually cut that in half. Once it was cut in half, I then used the input side of 120 volts from the receptacle breaker to the inverter. Then the output side picks up the dead lead that goes out to the actual receptacles. So now what you've got is 120 volts goes into the inverter. If it sees that voltage, it automatically selects that and sends 120 volts out. If it doesn't see this and the inverter's powered on, it in turn uses the 12 volts to convert to 120 and send it out to the receptacles. The inverter has to be turned on in order for the transfer switch to work. If there's no power to the inverter, the transfer switch is not going to work. Simply put, if you're on shore power or generator, the inverter stays on. If you're not on generator, not on shore power, and don't want to use the receptacles, just turn the inverter off. It won't pull any power at that point. But it has to be on in order for the transfer switch to work. The key thing about the transfer switch is it actually, once you go to 12 volts, it does not send 120 back into the electrical panel, so it will not backfeed the other circuits. It only outputs on the output side. That being said, as long as the transfer switch is working and you have power to the inverter, whether you have 120 or 12 volts, you're going to have power at the receptacles. There's just no way around that configuration. If you wanted to run the entire electrical panel off of one inverter, it's going to take a larger inverter than what we have here. Um, that would be a whole different wiring diagram, a whole different setup. I'm not going to get into that. I'm simply explaining how we done the AIMS PWR1X 120012S. That's it. Um, if you decide to use this to wire up your inverter on your RV, travel trailer, solar system, whatever the case may be, you accept full responsibility and understand that you may burn something up. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm telling you how we did it for our unit 
to better explain and answer some of the questions that are out there on how we connected different parts and where we picked up our power from. But to recap real quick, battery positive went to the electrical panel where the 12 volt system is for all the 12 volt fuses. We grabbed our 12 volts there and we used an existing chassis ground bar to ground our inverter. That gave us our 12 volts. Our 120 came from the receptacle breaker the power goes in and then goes out of the breakers. Out of that receptacle breaker, we cut that line, tied it into the input, and then tied the outgoing side to the output, and that sends the power out. We then ran our power switch up to the front of the RV. So when we go use store, we can turn this on. That in turn allows the transfer switch to work, which lets it select whether it's on 12 volts or 120. Um, guys, I hope this video has helped you out a lot. Uh, I know there's been several questions on how we connected these components and you know different things, and I've tried to explain it, but without looking at a wiring diagram and kind of, I guess, walking you through it, so to speak, it's hard for me to convey exactly how we did this. And each coach is different, and each RV is different. So the connections may be in different locations. You may have to pick up power somewhere else. You may have to run extra leads. There's a constant amount of variables that goes into it depending on the year model, the make, the manufacturer, everything. Um, I appreciate y'all tuning in. I appreciate all the questions and comments on our previous videos. If you do have a question on this one, drop it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, but definitely hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and stay tuned because we're going to be coming to you with more videos.